what is up welcome to the existential stoic podcast do you feel like you have too much stuff do you look around you know your room and you just have no place for new things when you get them or you just can't find what you need well today you're in luck we're going to talk about how to tidy up uh, i'm danny here my buddy randy what's up randy yo danny did you ever have too much stuff in your life or do you have too much stuff in your life <laughs> has my life ever been a mess yeah resounding yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Totally. You know, I actually, I, I was actually thinking also of this and on more of like a philosophical level, not just stuff in your life, but like, is your yeah, life a mess? It's a good you one. Tidy up your life. Oh, that's a good one too. I didn't, I didn't even think of it that way because it's early and I wasn't really thinking mm-hmm. clearly. But yeah, that's a good way to look at it too. Like, is mm-hmm. your well, it works both ways. I think though, because I think if you know, I think our physical, I think in some sense our physical reality matches our our philosophical reality, right? Like our our beliefs are. You know, the meaning we put in the world and all, it's all tied up with the crap that we have in our lives, too. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if your room's a hot mess, your brain's probably a hot mess, too. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's true, though. Oh, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we each have three tips. Hopefully, this will help you clean out both your room and your, your mental state. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go first. Uh, so my first one is ask, do, ask, what do I really need? And I think this is important because like, so I went through, I don't know about like, I remember when I was uh, first went to college, I moved like every year. And when I first went, I remember I had all this stuff and it was a pain in the ass getting everything in and on. I thought I needed it. And then it turns out like I didn't use like 50% of it. So I just started, just started trying to like, just eliminate things over time. It was hard at first. And what really helped me was actually when I drove home from grad school, because I didn't want, I just didn't, I just wanted to get out of there. And I was like, I just gave away stuff and threw stuff out and just totally like eliminated most of my stuff. And it helped. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I don't need it. It helped a lot. Like it just, that helped, but it was like a cleansing thing to do, you know, just like to let go of the attachment to it. Yeah, that's a really good one. And moving is a great way to figure out what you actually <laughs> yeah. want and what you don't. Because I did the same thing when I moved with my brother. We basically sold everything and then just moved. Because nowadays you can buy everything. And yeah. if you can't have it right now, you can get it, you know, order it and have it in the next day or two. So it's not like you even need to wait two weeks to get it. No. Yeah. Out there's of all the so out of all, there. <laughs> all the stuff that I have ever sold and gotten rid of, there's only two things that I ever regret out of the hundreds of thousands of things. One is a a guitar that I sold because they just don't make that model anymore. And I'm, uh, I think I'm somewhat nostalgic of it. Uh but like I'm sure I could find another. And two is a couch that's like because of production line stuff nowadays, you just can't get it anymore. So like, <laughs> yeah. I, the, or, it took, like the last time I went to go order that couch, it was like, oh yeah, it's like a year and a half to get it. I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> for a couch? <laughs> what is it made from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everything else. They're really hard material to source. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it just right. Uh, yeah, so my first one is similar, but a little bit different. Get rid of non-essentials. So, like, the the way that I look at this is, like, when I look at the stuff that I have around me, I want to make sure it's stuff that I actually use. And, like, instead of, instead of yeah. having... Because for the longest time, I had all these things. And even, like, a guitar was one of these things that I always had because I had this dream of being, like, a rock star guitarist that was just, you know very far off but like getting rid of the guitars yeah getting rid of the guitars in my life has freed me up because i don't have i know that like i've been playing guitar for 25 years and i'm still kind of like a okay hobbyist guitarist and it's like if it was really important to me i would have been really good 25 years is a long freaking time to play so like getting rid of it just cleared space for other stuff that i do want to be the rock star of no i like that one you know i did the same thing with my drums too because i I had them for a long time and i did i mean i you know if i really wanted to get better i would have put more time in. like i like i was a hobbyist that's it and like did i really need them Eh, it's like it gets that Mm -hmm. point i think the hard thing too and i think the essential thing is a really good way to look at it is like we attach sentimental value to stuff all the time and it and it makes it very hard to get rid of it because we think we really, really need it because of this thing or that or it has this value. But like, at the end of the day, it really doesn't have that value. That value is just things you made up. So think about what's really essential. I like what you said. Like, do I really use it? Like right now, all the stuff I have, I use every week pretty much. Except for maybe a couple of things, but there are things that I need that I use, you know, 
I just don't happen to use that often, but like most of it I do, I use all the time. So it's like, it's important. I need it. It's not extraneous extra stuff. So yeah, essentials is an awesome way to think. And it just, it makes it easier to live. <laughs> it really does. Mm -hmm. My next one is one year rule. Like if it hasn't come up in a year, you don't need it. It's a good way to look mm -hmm. at it, I think, because frankly, like, I mean, I still struggle with, like, there's still a few things I have that struggle with this that are like, you know, like sentimental stuff that like I do, I still have lingering around that I've been meaning to get rid of, but like that I haven't looked at in like, you know, a long time. And it's like, do I really even need this around? What's it doing for me? And my ask is that just holding on to junk? Because like, I think sometimes too, I wonder if that stuff holds us back as well. You know, I think like clutter and like hanging on to the past like that can also really hold you back by keeping you in the past rather than letting you go forward into the future or like to allow yourself space to do new things. I mean, tying that more into like the philosophical side of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like along with the time frame type thing, you can all just take a look. Like, is there dust collected on it? If there's dust on it, <laughs> get rid of it. And like a lot of people fear getting rid of stuff because they're like, well, what if someday I want to use it? And it's like, well, you can go buy it again. You know, if you really want to do it, like that would be a test that like you got rid of it and you were wrong about that and you had to go buy it again. You know, what if Antiques Roadshow comes around? I didn't know, <laughs> I know that it was right? worth a ton of money. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know somebody who's like a hoarder. And that's their thing is like every literally every expensive thing that they find, they just threw it away. Like we went to we went to some like silks museum and they're like, that's the thing that I had that you made me get rid of this time. And I'm like, OK, right. Sure that, one there, that one there. That, that one there. So that's the one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, oh, my, next, my next one is uh, if it bugs you, address it. So this is kind of like tidying up around the house, like some. You know, sometimes with like relationships, one person is a bit messier than the other person. One person leaves their socks on the ground. The other person doesn't like it. Or one person doesn't clean up their dishes. The other person doesn't like it. Well, guess what? If it bugs you, you don't need to nag them. You just yeah. clean it up. Because guess what? As soon as you clean it up, then it's the gone. world is right. Like if you hate yeah. socks being on the floor and every time you see socks on the floor, it messes with your mind, just pick up the socks. It takes less than a minute. Yeah. You put them away. And you know what? You feel better afterwards. Like, I do this stuff all the time where, like, you know, I see a piece of litter on the ground. And it bugs me. And I could just be like, oh, what's wrong with the world? Can't people use trash cans? And I'm just like, oh, wait. I'm here. I got two hands. All right. Pick it up. Yeah. Put it in the trash. <laughs> Done. I feel better. This is awesome. Yeah. And then you're helping out with the situation, right? You're actually actively making it better. I think that's a really good one, too, about, like, whether you want to play the role of the victim or whether you want to play the role of an active life and actually an intentional life. Because, you know, we all do that where we see someone like, oh, everybody's messed up. This is horrible. People just never change. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you're right there. You could be part of the solution or part of the problem. So or, be part of here's solution. another one at the gym in the locker room. Somebody leaves a towel on the bench and I'm like, what okay. the F is wrong with these people? Can't they return the towels where I could just pick up the towel and return it? You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like even better, you know, sometimes, you, you know, if you're lucky enough to see the person, you can address it directly and say, like, come on, can you now put this away? You don't have to be mean about it. You can just be, you know, and not start something. But like, I think it's so easy. And, you know, but yeah, be part of the solution. I like that one. That's really good. Mm -hmm. um, my last one is remember stuff isn't your life. And I think this is really important because I think we especially in like I know, especially in the U.S., like we get trapped in this where people like they wait for the new thing to drop. They're like, you know, waiting for, you know, the next tech gadget or whatever, or the next Nike shoe and stuff. And they get so caught up in like defining their life by like the objects they possess, by the things they have. It, like, you know, it's a sense of who you are and all. And I think if you do that too much, you lose yourself because you're defining yourself by other people's ideas. You're not actually defining yourself on your own. You know, you're waiting for people to come up with creative things that somehow say something about you rather than just doing it. And I think it's a really messed up way to think. It allows others to control your life rather than you controlling it and you determining what matters and what's valuable. So really remember that stuff just isn't your life. Like, you know, and I think this applies to everything. Like I, I know, like, give me an example. Like I had a, we had a period of time where like a lot of friends passed away and I had a lot of stuff from them that I was carrying around. And like, 
I remember one of the best things I did was I got rid of most of it. I kept a few very important things, like one for each person. And that's what I kept. And the rest I got rid of because I realized it was just like, I was just lugging this stuff around and lugging around the past and it wasn't helping me. So I just got rid of it, kept the things that really mattered. And that was it. And, you know, because the rest of the stuff isn't them. It's not, you know, it's not the person. It's not my memories. <laughs> you know, it wasn't helping like anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you I think you mentioned a good point there that you get to keep the memories like just because you get rid of the item. <laughs> it doesn't take away the memories. It doesn't take away all the good times that you had. Yeah, so that's a good one. Definitely. My last one is uh, for how to tidy up. Hire someone. Like so many people are just like, I got to do this on my own. And this works both for the physical and for the mental. Like if you live in a house that's just an absolute pigsty, hire somebody to clean it up for you. Like sure. There's like a it's million services. A little, <laughs> yeah, sure. It's like a little bit pricey, but you know, the peace of mind you get from that, totally worth it. Or, you know, if you're a mess mentally, hire a professional to help you work through your problems. That's what they're there for, you know? So mm -hmm. Those are those are just a couple things. Hire someone because maybe somebody's better at it than you. I like that. Yeah, I would add to that too. Like find a good friend, like you know, somebody you know that you trust that can help you with it too, and that's willing to help you both either with physical stuff or with mental stuff. I think both are doable. Mm -hmm. Somebody you can talk to, or somebody that can just help you like address the situation. And be like, dude, you don't need all this stuff. Like we can get rid of some of it, you know, and at least start the process. Because mm -hmm. I think it does. It helps a lot. It makes you feel, and like you said, it does. It, like. I think it really does bring clarity when you get rid of all the clutter. You just, you feel better and you feel like you can move forward. I really think it does lock us in the past and makes us mm -hmm. unable to, you know, really become our better selves or become like who we want to become because we're just tied down by all this garbage around us. Yeah. And for anybody who wants a deeper dive, not much deeper because it's a very short book, but the book <laughs> Goodbye Things, <laughs> I found that to be really really awesome in addressing getting rid of stuff because i also read the, that the magic uh no idea it's too Somebody, goodbye okay. things yeah okay. uh, and because i've also read like the life-changing magic of tidying up and that was a bit too like in-depth that was like i don't need i don't need like how to fold my clothes step by step like that's not what i'm interested in yeah. but the goodbye things is more of like a philosophy about kind of getting the big idea behind it so then you can get on board with it and i like that a lot better yeah i'd also recommend check out there's some really good um there's some really good documentaries i saw on minimalism on i think mm -hmm. it was on netflix had a good one that was a while ago but look them up because there's some really good stuff out there on minimalism and, and it's it i think once you start thinking that way you don't have to be completely minimalist like with nothing but like it really helps you think about like how much junk do i have that i don't need and especially because all of us once you like stay somewhere for an extended period of time i learned that the hard way when i went to like had an apartment for multiple years like you just acquired junk that you don't need dude so fast well yeah if you think about it on the grand scale like for tens of thousands of years humans were this nomadic people that like really didn't have that much would just move yeah. around from place to place live off the land only in the past hundred or so years did we become so like thing stuff oriented See, it's only been the past nine years or so that we could actually produce it that fast and that cheaply that we could have that much. You know, you made a table. It took a while. You had to go and then do there's all just stuff. master marketers nowadays who are just amazing at pushing the buttons to make you feel like a piece of shit. So you need to buy something to feel better. <laughs> yeah, feel better. <laughs> exactly. Huh. Well, there you have it. How to fix your life by tidying up or something along those lines. Check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Please like, sub uh, subscribe, and definitely share. It helps us out a lot. We'll be back later this week with a full-length episode. Until then, later, Andy. Later, Danny.